Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you're joining us for a half an hour of interesting conversation with four relatively interesting people <laughs> <laughs> who do have opinions on just about everything. So joining me today, Cal Potter, Tom Paneski, Ken Risto, I'm Mary Lynn Donahue, and we're just uh, going to get launching right into talking a little bit about uh, local issues this, uh, this time, what's happening in, uh, in the city and the county. For just a change of pace, I thought we would start with the schools. Uh, when I was on the school board, I can tell you that we were in the paper nearly every day, or at least every week, and there was one controversial decision after another. For those of us who read the Sheboygan Press, there just hasn't been much about the Sheboygan Area School District. And so it was uh, with great interest that I read the, the great debate about how to use the uh, extra money uh, that had come in from the referendum. Um, my understanding is that just from a financial perspective of the million dollars or so in excess that had been generated through interest and, and um, wise investing over a period of time and also some cost um, uh, underruns, uh, you know, there's a million dollars left that about 758,000 of that would have to go back to the federal government. Um, to me, that would be a convincing argument to hold on to it. it. Can't, that money, as I understand it, cannot be put back in the general capital fund, which had been my first idea is you, you always have roofs that need to be repaired and trucks and things that have to be purchased. But no, uh, it has to be used in, for the purpose for which the referendum was, was voted on, That's correct. which includes some construction of classrooms and so forth. So the school board in a 9-0 vote, it's kind of controversial, but in the end they, they had a 9-0 vote to, to hold on to the money and to invest it in what we're here calling the shell game. Uh, constructing some basic shells of classrooms that we may need at, at a different time. One, I think it's great that the school board is back and the school district is back in the news. <laughs> they deserve it. It's been too quiet for too long. Um, what do you think? Should, we get, should, should the taxpayers have gotten their $10 back or, or yeah, not? Yeah, that's what the math was. When it was all said and done, it was $10. And, and uh, I don't even think, uh, actually, that the, the money, the, the shelling process, and I'm not quite, quite sure what that means. I just see, <laughs> see this big eggshell. Um, uh, but I don't even know if it's been committed necessarily to classroom space yet. I think there's some st discussion about uh, just really covering it, uh, keeping it, you know, I think minimally heating it at, at best. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any electrical work being put in or any uh, plumbing or anything like that. And just to keep that, that square footage and keep your options open uh, about what that's going to, what, what it's going to be needed. It's kind of tricky because uh, the, the, we're looking right now at uh, student population projections declining mm -hmm. ra rather mildly, nothing dramatic, mm -hmm. but you know, we're looking at right now a little over 10,000 students and maybe losing 150 over the next four years. You know, but on the other hand, capacity at the high schools, anyway, if that's, that's where they're shelling. Um, capacity is running around uh, 90, 93%. In other words, there's very few classrooms that aren't being used at any given time as you walk down the halls at North and South High School. Um, so, you know, $10, I mean, do you want to go back to the taxpayers 7, 8, 10, 12 years from now and say, oh, by the way, here's another referendum because we need to have more, more space for labs or for those types of things? Um, I mean, politicians always like to give away a surplus. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, Thompson did that, and Dreyfus. I, yes. And Dreyfus as well, only to be faced in short time and in with both the, circumstances with, with significant deficit. sure. deficits. And, you know, people don't really yeah. remember all that well with their $10 or $60 or $200. Which, you know, it's nice not to discount, you know, getting that check in the mail, but the long term. You know, cost. Uh, it just—it seemed like a sensible decision that the board made. It was, was a good, excuse me. Well, it was, I thought it was really an odd thing, though. Um, I mean, I don't think the board any really seriously ever really talked about sending everybody a ten-dollar rebate and giving a big chunk of it back to the national government. Um, that being said, I went to the district television channel, and they were posing it as almost a serious consideration. I, you know, I kept going back to it, and there was a big question: Should this money go back to the taxpayers? I don't know if they were just trying to get people to come to the meeting, um, <laughs> or what, what the intention was. You're just enjoy, you know, not enjoying an anonymity, or right, or, or and what? certainly got 
was it, I don't know, was it Sykes or was it Billings again? I think it was Billings. Billings, that, yeah. Billings took the, took the, oh, the right. ball and ran with that for, you know, gave him a livelihood for a couple of days, and that was, you know, good for him. You had to get a real job, that guy, you know? Well, Dirk Seilman oh. told me that he called in because he was so upset with what Belling was saying on the oh, radio about, uh, you know, what was going on and, and so forth, and, um, uh, and he kept calling. So at a certain point, uh, Belling was calling him uh, Dirk Rinfleisch. <laughs> Ron Rinfleisch, of course, being the chair of the... Conflating two people. <laughs> of the but accuracy, yeah, you don't have to worry about that when you're in the well, I guess, Forte. I guess, yeah. I guess Dirk was very articulate, details, details. And, and Belling kept taking the calls until he asked Dirk what his profession was, and he said a retired college uh, administrator, and that was the end of that. I said, you sh you're, you're a retired banker, that's what you should, yeah. <laughs> should have told him, but it does seem to be a, a sensible decision that the board made, but I, I thought it was an interesting discussion, and... You'd think that people would be happy that we invested the money well and that the the projection or the um, project costs were kept under tight control and that it was financially a successful thing. But uh, I think this is a good example of why we have representative government to study an issue. I think on the surface, you know, the gut reaction is government took that money from me, now government give it back to me. But when you start looking about, you have to give some to the feds and it's only $10 a person, and what building costs will be to do this same construction five years from now, yeah. you just say, hey, this is a, let's do it. Um, this just makes a lot of sense. And the vote on the, on the school board of the unanimous vote, mm -hmm. I think, showed that when everybody did the math and did the study, that's why you have representative government to do yeah. some of that in-depth study. And I think that it proved to, to be wise people doing their homework and coming to a, a reasonable decision. And yeah. overall, I mean, I think that people do like the Sheboygan School District. Remember that referendum passed with a 63% yeah. approval rating, which it was a large referendum. It was $32 million, if my memory serves me correct. Well, let's go west a little bit to Sheboygan Falls, which is launching into its new building campaign for a for a middle school, and and that school board has had has actually has been in the news quite a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they would like to be in the news a little less, uh, but uh, it, it appears that's going to go to the voters as to whether or not a new middle school should be should be built. I've been in the old middle school, and it's it's old. It used to be the high school. Yeah. It used to be the right. grade school. And right. uh, uh, I've been in that auditorium, which you know really takes you back. I mean, you feel like you're in the 30s. Uh, it's it's old, old, um, old buildings can be just fine. But Cal, you're in the Sheboygan Falls school district. Uh, school yeah. district. What do you think? Well, I, I think uh, they're in facing a, a sticker shock situation. I think. A couple of years ago, they just spent $12 million for a new elementary school, and now you're talking about maybe $16 million for a middle school, and people start adding that up, especially someone who has years under their belt, you know, $28 million in a period of just a relatively short period of time is something that a lot of people feel is just a high figure. But the problem is you don't build much today for, for a couple million bucks. I mean, I remember North High School, what was it, $3 million you could build a high school. Today, mm -hmm. high schools are $30, $35 million to build one. It's, it's unbelievably expensive, but uh, sometimes you do have to provide uh, adequate accommodations for kids. And either you do extensive renovation or you do a new build. And there again, you've got to do your studies, and that's what that school board is hired to do. Is, is that going to a referendum? Yeah, that was yes. my question. It is. It is going to a referendum for the April election? And is that for a new building, or do voters get know. a choice? I don't remember yeah. the exact. Uh, yeah. They had their public hearing, and I don't know exactly what the decision yeah. was on the referendum. The right. the amount, uh, the additional amount that a family would have to pay is a little. It's, it's kind of substantial. Yeah, well, sixteen million bucks is a yeah. lot of money in a small, in a small, relatively small <coughs> school yeah. district. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because we were able to in the in the Sheboygan area school district finance that thirty two million for. A pretty small amount, of like thirty dollars a year. Um, right. I, I may have that wrong, but I mean, it was a modest amount, which I'm sure had something to do with with the um, with the overwhelming uh, passage of it. But it's interesting. School boards can live and die on those kinds of referenda. Yes. Um, and, and it really kind of shows that a district needs to, as you go along, continue to build the facilities. Don't let it sort of dam up. Um, I used to teach in the Plymouth district, and the superintendents that were out there built. Plymouth is not that much bigger than Sheboygan Falls. And you no, look look not. at the number of schools, you know, Riverview, Parkview, Horizon, the elementary schools, the middle school, the nice high school. And when they had growth, 
it was easy to just add classrooms. People generally have a good feeling about adding four or five classrooms to an existing school. It's not sticker shock, it's just sort of, yeah, I guess you <coughs> need some room, your kids are climbing out of the windows, you need some more classes. And it's easy to do that. But you know, Falls at one time had very few, or did, it still does, really mm -hmm. relatively few buildings. And now yeah. all of a sudden, in a short period of time, $12 million for a elementary school and $16 million for a middle school, you know, had they had those buildings in place and they were having uh, space problems, it would be easier just to add on. Well, and Falls so has taken some, uh, I don't know, yeah. civic pride, but Falls certainly has always liked having the, one of the lowest mill rates, you know, in the, in the county. Um, and, and you're right, it, it ends up coming back to haunt you. I know that they're, um, because their pay scale is not as competitive as, of course, they have to compete against the big gorilla next door, you know, my, my world. Um, they have a hard time retaining staff. There's been a real migration of Sheboygan Falls staff over to the Sheboygan Area School District. Uh, my, I guess, truth in lending, my brother being one of them. Um, the district was successful, I think, um, in getting this um, referendum, our referendum passed because they spent a considerable amount of time uh, really doing some strategic planning about which groups of people need to be talked to, the service groups and the various organizations and having a committee of concerned citizens they answer the kinds of questions that inevitably come up in a debate and in a forum um, and figure out a way to make this make this work. I don't know that the conditions at um, in Sheboygan Falls are like that right now. Um, I think the community is really polarized around the existing educational leadership there and I think there's a substantial number of people, I don't know if it's significant enough to have this thing defeated, but there's a good group of people that are coming in saying um, given who's in charge right now, given the kinds of experiences we've had about football and all the other issues that have polarized that community, whether they're going to vote under the existing leadership for, for anything. And I think they're going to have to overcome that hurdle. It's going to be a challenge for him. And we are not going to ask Cal how he's going to vote, but instead, <laughs> <laughs> instead we're going to move on uh, and talk about, in fact, there was a Sheboygan Press editorial about uncontested elections. As you know, we have 34 county board supervisors, and it appears at this point one will be contested, one seat. And it appears, and I didn't check uh, to see if any, any new is that Folks a city seat or uh, out of city seat? I, you, you know, know, I don't I remember. Don't which I think one. it's Obler's seat, isn't it? It's, it's Keith Obler's seat. That's yeah. right. Out in Plymouth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Out, out west. Um, and I don't know if there are any more contested elections, any, anybody else who's come in to take out nomination papers, but wow. Yeah, and you know? any service we can get out of this program is that there still is time because if this yeah. airs before the what the fifth of January, right. uh, which is the deadline, people need what about twenty signatures? 50. I think fifty. Is it fifty? 50? They the editorial said twenty, and they okay. corrected it the next day, okay. and it, so it okay. is fifty. Well, 50 Only twenty for enough. older people, but. Okay. Uh, but if people uh, feel incensed about uh, some of the dealings that the county board has uh, undertaken over the last year, particularly in the area of the nursing homes. Um, that is their hot button issue. I think mm -hmm. so. And that's why I think it's rather surprising that there aren't many people that are taking out papers. If it's indeed, as we tape this program, only one person out of all these seats, uh, that's a sad indictment, I think, on people's uh, desire to, to do something different, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering why, given all of the discussion about you know, nursing homes and county facilities that those folks who are really irritated and unhappy with some of the direction that the county board has taken aren't generating candidates and aren't making an effort to find yeah. candidates to run against people that they know are voting opposite yeah. of their views. I'm, I, usually that's what happens. We saw it in the city of Sheboygan with you know, Sheridan sure, Park and Sheridan all that Park. sort of thing. Yeah. Well, and there, was, there have been county board controversies that have resulted in significant turnover. And the one I remember is nighttime meetings yeah. and health insurance costs. And that really flamed people up. But you're completely well, right. I mean, why? Well, maybe their county administrator has kind of evened things out so you don't have these contentions. I don't know. Maybe that's serving as a, a way to eliminate some of the, uh, the possible uh, infighting or the news that goes on uh, with uh, dealing with county issues. I don't know. One of the, Maybe the, that county, helps. Yeah. the county board right now is struggling uh, just moving on to the nursing home issue. Um, again, with projections that the county will lose very substantial amounts of money on an ongoing basis and that number going up each year, uh, looking at downsizing or realigning how nursing home services are provided by the county. 
There's even a struggle about how to word an advisory referendum, which the county board would like to do, because as I understand it, I may, may not have this 100% right, the advisory referendum in the, on the April ballot can be fairly descriptive and, 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 and give people a clue about what the issue is. In November, the statute um, that you, there's a certain wording that you have to use if you want to exceed your budget levy and, or the, the levy caps, and it's not real descriptive. So <clears throat> the county board really needs to connect the dots in April through to November if it really would like some sense from the community as to what they want to do, and I think that's kind of tough. Well, I'm glad to see there's talk about it, if they haven't already formally done so, getting St. Norbert's College involved in the, in the wordage. Mm -hmm. Because there are really uh, two camps on that county board. Uh, one, the minority camp that didn't want to downsize, who would probably like to see the wordage uh, in tie in the downsizing with the people's willingness to pay more to sort of maybe compromise on the downsizing that's ultimately going to occur. And then there's others who are going to say, do you want to pay more for your nursing homes uh, or yeah. do you want property tax relief or, you know, something rather straightforward and more fiscal in nature rather than right. the, uh, the issue of uh, the downsizing. So I, I think uh, getting someone else in here hopefully will get some objective wording for the people to consider. Yeah, it'll be You know, when, when we talked about it before, didn't you say something that the the state's thrust in nursing home delivery and care is changing and that Sheboygan's having established nursing homes is kind of a, becoming a relic? Well, Sheboygan County is one of uh, maybe half a dozen uh, that still have nursing homes. The other states or other counties have gotten out of the business, but Sheboygan County made a concerted effort over the years to have three homes. And uh, it's just a matter of do you want to continue that service that this county sort of historically has embarked on? And there's upon. a push, uh, uh, um, and it's purely fiscally oriented, I think. Well, not purely, but in, in great share, uh, to get people out of nursing homes and into a lesser restrictive environment because it costs so much. A community based residential facility will mm -hmm. run 1800 2000 a month. Nursing home costs are now 5000 a month. Mm -hmm. And it's a staggering amount of money. Uh, and those are private pay, and uh, you know the medical assistance reimbursement certainly doesn't do it at, f at full cost by any stretch. And uh, so I think there's a change in how we, we're thinking about providing care. I think yeah, so. How do you get that issue across in a referendum? You don't yeah, get that issue it's across. It's an educational <laughs> issue. Well, there's also another side to that: um, the the community options program, where you can get people keep them in their homes and provide services. But one of the problems in many of these uh, alternatives to nursing homes has been inadequate state funding. Right. So you've got the commitment philosophically to do something as an alternative, mm -hmm. but most people are not uh, confident that the dollars yeah. are going to be there to serve the clientele that We've need got, yeah. in home service. You've got the waiting list. You've got right. Jane and then Bob and then Highway 23 and then <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. you know, there's a limited yeah, amount of money yeah. to, to go around. So um, the county board's been pretty quiet other than this issue. The city council, on the other hand, has been anything but. Um, is there a bloodbath <laughs> you know, Ron, in the streets? Ron, 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 <laughs> Ron Earl, I used to talk about you know the school board being the theater of the absurd or something like that. Yeah, I think you got it wrong. I think you know just go to the county, go to some of the members of the common council and and uh, I think that'd be a much more appropriate label. I, I mean, was thinking people of people are actually absolutely embarrassed by this. Uh, as I talk to them, you know, they just wonder. Uh, this is something. It almost reminds you of middle school when I, you know, I taught middle oh, sure. school. Little, little you know, kids, people are yeah, little, little kids, kids on the playground fight. and they're passing notes in class. Uh, well, I don't know I like how it's going to play I, out when we get we get yeah. elections. But I got to mm -hmm. I got to got to think that somewhere along the way, this, some people are going to get their comeuppance. I don't know. Well, I like the idea of Dixie cups and string. And, yeah. you know, maybe we could just, you know, pass those out. Yeah. It was an interesting, uh, the, um, certainly the article in the press was pretty long and, and pretty exhaustive. Yeah. And uh, um, I mean, just having the police department investigate just sounded yeah. so ridiculous. Yeah, it, it sounded ridiculous. Yeah, they, yeah. You know. The people I spoke with, you know, run around at Piggly Wigglies and all that kind of thing. Anthony Bonilla looked ridiculous. The, the police chief looked ridiculous. Um, and Not I think that we tell it like it is here. Well, I mean, that's, this is what I'm hearing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and and you know, I guess you know, to his credit, uh, Alderman Manny, you know, at least put a public apology out there, um, and quite a graceful one. I I would a say. very graceful one, and I think you know, 
I mean, he, I think he understood that he, had a, he was having a private conversation just about what was going on at council and somehow it took on a life of its own that he certainly didn't intend. So, I mean, he was able to exit the program gracefully. I think the mayor looks, actually, I think the mayor looks reasonably good. He looks like a little bit, I wouldn't say quite like the elder statesman here, but, but I think he, he ends up looking even better. And so I think you've got all, you know, you've got certain individuals who are continually trying to make uh, mountains out of molehills. And I don't know if they perceive that they're creating a political advantage for themselves, but I'm looking at the camera and saying it ain't working. Yeah. Uh, it's and maybe the news media shouldn't have put this on a front page story. I mean, well, it, was, it was, when I read right. it, I could at least, you could just see, you know, Alderman Benet's or, you know, vendetta, so to speak, against the mayor because of past uh, firings and so on. And sure. you just wonder whether you should give somebody, you, you know the motivation here, and it's probably not well, right. well thought out or well based, and as a result, it got into something that maybe shouldn't have been a front page story. Yeah, I have to say, you know, what, uh, Mayor Perez said something and it was quoted in that article near the end of the article saying, well, next time I I won't be able to talk to these aldermen without my lawyers present. Yeah. I thought he should have yeah. just zipped it right there and not said anything. That, that wasn't helpful. Him, that wasn't helpful. That, that wasn't helpful. No. <laughs> you were on the city council, we know. That um, does happen. Yeah. And uh, we were, uh, <laughs> the school board in my day uh, from time to time was not quite as civil as it could be. Um, but was there rampant incivility? Um, Oh, you had no. You have factions. I mean, uh, they were anti-Schneider uh, uh, council member. I mean, uh, council members. Uh, initially, they were anti-Schneider, but Schneider had a way of winning them over after a while. I mean, when he first won, uh, it was this Susha faction, uh, Alderman Tetchlag uh, and others, who really wanted Susha to continue, and there were just a couple of us that wanted Schneider. Schneider won, and. They were, Dulcie Johnson was also on the council at that time. She was very supportive of Mayor Susha. And there was uh, a period where there was uh, real animosity and there was a question of committees, like we had the committee appointments, mm -hmm. they had that. But Schneider had a way of winning them over after a while and then they all proceeded to work together at least. And you'd still then have your normal conflicts. Some mm -hmm. people want this, some people want that. Sure. But, after but nobody calling the cops. But nobody called him that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, to the police, maybe he had, maybe, maybe the law, I don't know, maybe the law required him to make at least some sort of gesture to do that. I don't know. But, well, we, we, did, we, but the I, public I, doesn't understand those distinctions, and, and he got kind of tired with the same brush. Yeah, yeah. And I do remember, I just, as you're talking about it, I do remember at some point, uh, this was maybe in his second term, not his first term, but the, the initial election results dissipated after about six months to a year. Six months to eight months. But in his second term, he did something on the, the lakefront. Uh, uh, tore down a lot of bushes and cleaned it up uh, because he had an opportunity to do that. And this is Mayor Schneider. And he didn't uh, get the council's consent. So if you remember, they, uh, they what did they, uh, they cited the mayor for, uh, I forget what they call it now. An ethics violation? No. Abuse of power? Uh, something like that. I forget <laughs> what they call it. They censured. They censured, censured the mayor. Censured. They censured the mayor. Contempt of council, <laughs> I was going to say. For acting without council approval. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, but, yeah. But, I mean, there was a group of them still that had that in the back of the mind, and they, they yeah. went out and censured. And, of course, now we like the lake, the yeah. lakefront with yeah. the the little pathway and the, the, the shrubs gone and a nice little beach area. That lively tension between the executive and the, and <laughs> and the legislative. Yeah. So, yeah. well, um, I'm, I don't think there's any direct correlation, but uh, at least we have a few more contested city council seats than we do county board seats. Mm -hmm. Eight of the 16 seats are up for re-election and um, uh, Alderman Vanderweel has uh, opposition in the um, in the 8th district and in fact if if everybody gets nomination papers in and you only need 20 for an aldermanic district there'll be a primary. Um, I believe Marge Segal is going to have uh, uh, at least one person. The p newspaper said that there was going to be somebody running against Dan Berg who was certainly the in the center of, sure. of the the bloodbath mm -hmm. controversy if we can call it that. <laughs> um, and what uh, you do about nothing. And, and Alderman Van Akron of course has resigned or not resigned but indicated yeah, he's not going to re-up and so mm -hmm. Jack Westfall is in that uh, 
is in that mix. So again, we may just we may may see a significant change in the in the city council. Mark Hanna will be running oh, yeah. for a Bill Steffen yeah. seat yeah. because Steffen is not running again. And at least so far as I know, there is no opposition in that district. So. Um, I think one of the distinctions here is that the city council districts, it's, it's, people seem to know who their alder person exactly. is, but they just don't know who their county board supervisor exactly. is. That's and they don't correct. know where their district is. And I think when people are not comfortable <coughs> answering who's your county board supervisor or what district do you live in, they're not even going to run for it if they don't even know sure. the basics of <coughs> the district. Well, and the county board keeps, I mean, they have, quite frankly, a whole lot more money than the city. Yes. Um, you well, know, there's what, what, a, there's what is, a bigger budget what there. What does the county board get, though? I mean, when you're a county board uh, person, you get benefits, and you get a per diem for each meeting you go to. A per mm -hmm. diem. And so if you're, but there's no salary associated. Um, the, uh, the county board chair and vice chair, I think, have a salary. Mm -hmm. But you're right. And, and the city um, council, they get about five grand. About forty-eight hundred, I think. Forty-eight hundred uh, a year. So and they don't get and per diem. They like don't get. Per diem, and they don't get <laughs> school board ought to up it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was. <clears throat> I think there wasn't that long ago uh, some discussion about that, and mm -hmm. and uh, the political winds at the time just didn't make that a, uh, even a viable proposal. And how things changed. My first year on the school board, the board just before I was sworn in had voted to cut their salaries in half. So. I mean and the, devote the and devote their thirty eight dollars or whatever to <laughs> to buying library books, but. Uh, well, then it was the great cookie debate. The great cookie debate. I mean, the board spent time talking about because when they got there, there were some central kitchens made cookies, and they had so they had some sort of a little snack during their meetings, and there was some discussion. Which about, only you went know, six or seven the, hours. You know, <laughs> fiscal, yeah, fiscal. <laughs> we needed more than that. Uh, you, you, needed a, you needed a drink. <laughs> but but there was I remember them talking about this too. That it was, and the board was split. You know, about we should have cookies, we shouldn't have cookies. And I thought, oh my god. We're beginning to run out of time, but. Um, Cal, this doesn't <coughs> pertain to you because you're not a resident of the city, but did you guys get your citizen surveys and are you yep. filling them out? I've and, already filled and mine out. what do you think? Good idea, <clears throat> bad idea? Well, I, I didn't fill mine out. I read it and I thought, okay, I will fill it out and I will send it in. Okay. So I thought, I think, I don't know what it's going to do. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's because I don't know, I don't know how many they're going to get and how many people are going to duplicate them. But uh, I, well, think Jack a, Westfall, I think it's a yeah. decent idea. Mm -hmm. Jack Westfall crafted the survey. Those questions, which are generating some controversy, actually were statements that came out of the, the 16 public hearings that the mayor had. And um, people can agree or disagree. And the questions, some are worded affirmatively, some are worded negatively. But that came out of those budget discussions, I know, because I was... I, I heard a, a discussion a about one question that's ambiguous. Uh, do you want to keep the transit service at the same yeah. level we have now? Well, we, well, if you want to increase it, you say, I strongly disagree with keeping yeah. it the same. And if you want to reduce there it, I go. strongly disagree. Uh, you, Leave you, it to a mathematician, <laughs> but the, the survey from the public is, we're going to keep the Donahue Group, and thank you for joining us.